Good morning, friends old and new. It is I, Trinity, your diverse fairy tale guide, here with another tale from China. Uh, the last one was pretty popular, so I definitely wanted to get back to this book. Uh, this one does involve talking about uh, alcoholism and addiction. Uh, so if you have a problem with those uh, topics, maybe skip to the next one. However, uh, my commentary will be coming from a sober person's point of view, so maybe that'll be interesting to you. Uh, without further ado, we have... The Boon Companion Once upon a time, there was a young man named Chi, who was not particularly well off, but at the same time very fond of his wine. So much so, that without his three stoops of liquor every night, he was quite unable to sleep, and bottles were seldom absent from the head of his bed. One night, he had waked up and was turning over and over, when he fancied someone was in the bed with him. But then, thinking it was only the clothes which had slipped off, he put out his hand to feel, and in doing so, touched something silky like a cat. Striking a light, he found it was a fox, lying in a drunken sleep like a dog. And then, looking at his wine bottle, he saw that it had been emptied. A boon companion, said he, laughing, as he avoided startling the animal, and, covering it up, lay down to sleep with his arm across it and the candle alight so as to see what transformation it might undergo. About midnight, the fox stretched itself, and Che cried, Well, to be sure, you've had a nice sleep. He then drew off the bedclothes and beheld an elegant young man in a scholar's dress. But the young man jumped up and, making a low obeisance, returned his host many thanks for not cutting off his head. Oh, replied she, I am not averse to liquor myself. In fact, they say I'm much too given to it. If you have no objection, we'll be a pair of bottle and glass chums. So they lay down and went to sleep again, Che urging the young man to visit him often and saying that they must have faith in each other. The fox agreed to this, but when Che awoke in the morning, his bedfellow had already disappeared. So he prepared a goblet of first-rate wine in expectation of his friend's arrival, and at nightfall, sure enough, he came. They then sat together drinking, and the fox cracked so many jokes that she said he regretted he had not known him before. And truly, I don't know how to repay your kindness, replied the fox, in preparing all this nice wine for me. Oh, said she, what's a pint or so of wine? Nothing worth speaking of. Well, you are only a poor scholar, said the fox, and money isn't so easily to be got. I must see if I can secure a little wine capital for you. Next evening, when he arrived, the fox said to Chi, Two miles down toward the southeast, you will find some silver lying by the wayside. Go early in the morning and get it. So on the morrow, Che set off, and actually obtained two lumps of silver, with which he bought some nice morsels to help them out with their wine that evening. The fox now told him that there was a vault in his backyard, which he ought to open, and when he did so, he found therein more than a hundred strings of cash. Now then, cried she, I shall have no more anxiety about funds for buying wine with all of this in my purse. Ah, 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 replied the fox. The water in a puddle is not inexhaustible. I must do something further for you. Some days afterwards, the fox said to Chi, Buckwheat is very cheap in the market just now. Something is to be done in that line. Accordingly, Chi bought over 40 tons and thereby incurred general ridicule. But by and by, there was a bad drought and all kinds of grain and beans were spoiled. Only buckwheat would grow, and Che sold off his stock at a profit of 1,000%. His wealth thus began to increase. He bought 200 acres of rich land and always planted his crops, corn, millet, or whatnot, upon the advice of the fox secretly given to him beforehand. The fox looked on Che's wife as a sister and on his children as his own, but when subsequently Che died, it never came to the house again. The end! Okay, so I didn't actually go searching for a story with this topic, but I tripped over it, and I'm really happy I did. Um, some people in my life know that I did celebrate five years sober from alcohol on the 7th of August. Um, so I am five years old, so the fort... I'm five years old, so the fort is entirely appropriate. Thank you. Um, but in any case... I definitely saw some common threads through this story uh, from my experience in active addiction and afterwards. Um, I really enjoyed that the that she just wakes up with a random fox who is later going to turn into maybe some kind of human. We're not sure because in uh, Chinese legend, foxes are tricksters and they can uh, shape change into a lot of different forms. And um, so, yeah, but she totally cool with it because he's hammered. Um, I did also enjoy that the fox is giving Chi tips throughout. Um, so it sounds like vaguely sketchy, um, like some insider training notes, uh, or I don't know, maybe he's just like a drunk farmer's almanac, I guess. Um, but yeah, there is some shady aspect, which I would agree. 
is usually in dealings with people uh, if they are just in the depths of active addiction. And then at the end, kind of the bummer um, of it is that he had a boon companion in the fox uh, and vice versa. So as soon as Che died, even though the fox had previously had a really great relationship with his family, the fox is gone because his drinking bod- buddy is gone. And unfortunately, this is a pretty uh, reliable occurrence uh, in early sobriety. So you find out the difference between friends and drinking buddies, and unfortunately that you have way more drinking buddies than friends in a lot of cases. Um, So yeah, how does this relate to your experience in sobriety? Or if you are not living that life or dealing with addiction demons, um, what do you think of fair weather friends? I know everybody has those. So yeah, just uh, let me know and I'll see you next time.